Hey everybody, what is going on? It's your boys at Day 3 bringing you another patch rundown. Today we're running down patch 9.18 for Teamfight Tactics. And today this patch has been released and as a whole, it's fairly good. It's more oriented around actual itemizations for new things and then a few champion tweaks here and there. So we're going to start off with this patch discussing the new mystery box system. In a sense, what they have done is they reworked how you get items and every minion wave is now instead of just being a random box you're now either going to get a common box an uncommon box a rare box or a rare box obviously and in the common box it's gold champions or a nico's help uh uncommon boxes contain items into the mix and Rare boxes add spatulas and full items to this set of things, as well as every champion getting roughly the same amount. So they've balanced out how items work, so everyone's getting a bit more of a level playing field in that term. And number of boxes are equal out as well, obviously, so that people get a decent balance in what they get, which I like this change. I'm yet to play on this patch yet. I'll probably do... A TFT time later today, or use one of my footages from my Monday's game haul, I guess. Anyway, we move on from this, and you've probably already noticed it, it says here already. It's Nico's help. This is a fairly nice item. In a sense, it recreates a level 1 version of whatever champion you put on this item. Nico's help is obviously consumable. And it creates one star copy of the champion and puts it on the bench. It also is very good as everyone gets that point in the game where you're searching and sifting through your coins in order to find that one champion you need. Well, this item kind of does help, in a sense. Avoid having to sift through your shop and allow you to get to the higher levels quicker, which I do like this. This is a very good item. I'm glad that it's not a craftable item, and it's just a random drop item. It makes it a bit more balanced, I'd say. And as a whole, I do like this change. Plus, with that in mind, it's actually been added into every different box of the Mystery Boss system, and that makes it a bit more easier to attain. Anyway, moving on to the systems. XP has been adjusted, and... What has happened? They've increased the amount of XP needed to get to every level because of this new item in Nico's help and the way the new mystery box system works. It makes it a little easier to get to the higher levels. So they did kind of need to rework that to make it a bit more balanced. Anyway, the tier drop rates for champions have been slightly altered. They've increased the amount of level 3s and level 5s and that is kind of good you're obviously going to have some fun here because now you can obviously get more level 1s at level 3 which is good same with at level 5 they've been actually lowered a few of them as well just to make it a bit more balanced and as a whole it feels pretty good in terms of actual balance now. Moving on to the champion pool size. In the tier 3 champion pool, which is a bit nicer, they've lowered the amount of champions. Which is kind of nice. I guess it obviously balances it out a bit more. But it's going to be a bit more of rewarding for those who obviously go for it. Moving on to item stacking and clarity. So, what they've done here is they've made it so certain items no longer stack. That is very good in the sense that Red Buff, Moron Omicron, Phantom Dancer... All these stuff was stacking, and that is very good. So, in a sense, if you built Ghostblade, you could basically 
stack extra attack damage as well as making them multiple assassins. So, like, they've obviously made it so it's a bit more fairer, and you can obviously put it on different champions now, allowing more item consistency between champions. Now, traits have been changed, or as what I like to call them, classes. There's now nine pieces sets for assassins and sorcerers, and this should be good. As it annoys me that Blade Master already had this change. With there only being seven normal Blade Masters, and you had to get two spatulas to obviously get the tier three buff. It's kind of annoying that every other class, like Assassins and Sorcerers, even Noobles and that, have just six set characters in it did kind of make it a bit unfair and unbalanced, so I'm surprised they haven't done this to glacials or demons and things like that that all have spatula items yet, because that would make it so much better and a bit more balanced. Moving on, wilds have received a butt off. In a sense, they've added an additional clause to make it so that their attacks cannot miss. Yes, that is very good, and it does make Wilds a bit more of a counter to the Yordle buff. As Yordles, if you don't realise, tend to make you miss. And that is very good. Plus, you can now go for more of a balanced attacking route. Because people tend to only use Wild early game. Because the stacking of attack speed is very good. But they tend to alter off into demons, glacials, guardians, nobles for late game. So wild tends to get dropped immediately. Next we have a couple of general traits being adjusted. And elementalist golem's armor has been increased. They've also increased the amount of damage reduction knights get. Which is a nice change. It's not the biggest thing. Knights are pretty bland all things considered the fact that you're not going to get as much use out of them because of the damage reduction was so low that now it's kind of a bit more eh and finally they've increased the amount of jump delay on assassins which if you didn't watch my latest uh well today's tft time where it's an assassin based video we discuss that I hate how long you have to wait for assassins to jump at a target. It increases the amount of time before you obviously can attack the thing. Like, it's three seconds. Now it's probably around four with that change, and I don't like that. Anyway, moving on to champions, and let's discuss these slight tweaks to champions. As you can see here, there isn't many big changes other than Camille's attack damage has been increased, this which is eh, Elise's spiderlings have received a bit more of a damage buff, eh, Graves' arm has gone up, Cassidy's attack damage has been decreased, which I do like, it does mean that he'll probably get less of an, a shield from his attacks, which does mean he's going to be less useful. And Karzig's total mana is gone up, meaning he's obviously going to have a bit more of a harder time to get his ultimate. Anyway, Pike's received a bit of a nerf. His mana was a bit too high at the start of the game, as obviously he was able to fire off that stun almost immediately in every fight. Twisted Fates received a bit of a buff in the sense that his blue card's mana regained gone up and the amount of health he has has got on up by at least 50. Let's now talk about probably the biggest changes here. Evelyn has received her nerf. She has been needing this for a while now and that ultimate was pretty much the most deadly thing to see on the TFT battlefield. In a sense, they've lowered the amount of time it takes her to use the ult, but 
the amount of people it hits has gone down a little. This is a very good change as she was able to kill about 4 or 5 people in one swing if you built enough AP on her. And that is obviously really good. Katarina has received the buff which I am a big fan of because we never really saw the her spinner rooney ultimate that often is it was kind of a bit too late into a fight she got it so lowering the amount of mana she has is obviously gonna do wonders anyway akali has received a buff this is a big thing for me she kind of was this lackluster ninja that no one really picked up in assassin comps because zed was so easy to get up to level three now you have the Kali as more of a viable option with the amount of damage she does. And finally, let's discuss tier 5 champions. Anivia has had her ultimate changed her amount of time the damage is done is the same. Well, the amount of damage she does is the same. It's just a little quicker. Pantheon's health has been decreased and his attack damage has been decreased, sort of like little tweak to the release, which I guess is a decent patch. It does balance him out a little more and as a whole is very good. Let's move on to items. We've got a couple more topics to t discuss here. BF Sword's attack damage has been decreased. Yes. The amount of times I've seen people build IE, the amount of damage that that gives was insane so you had four plus 40 attack damage on that because two bf swords it was down to probably about 30 now plus the amount of crit chance that has it's a decent change i like it frozen hearts debuff duration's gone up kind of makes the item a bit more viable as let's be honest frozen heart gets annoying because it does load the attack speed and it's good if you come up against people building Rage Blade. Locket of the Iron Solari is receiving a buff here. 50 extra armor and for a bit longer, which is very nice. Now, I honestly thought that the armor was permanent for the entire round. However, it turns out it was only for 6 seconds. Now, with this change, it obviously does mean that champions are going to be able to live a bit longer, which is very good. And it does mean we get a bit more of a balanced fight if you build, obviously, this item. Sawbreak has also received a buff. The chance to disarm has gone up, but for less time. Sawbreaker was very annoying if you didn't realise if it procced. It basically meant you weren't able to attack for, basically, your champion's life. And finally, we have Zephyr. It's increased the banish duration with the hurricane appearing underneath a champion. I'm not a big fan of it, but it is receiving the buff nonetheless. And yeah, that's a big change. Let's just, I'm going to flash up here the bug fixes. Obviously, we can discuss the Lunt's Echo fix here. In a sense, if you didn't realize, Lunt's Echo was fucked. In the sense that it now hits the main target with the ability. As well as hitting an additional target. It wasn't actually hitting the additional ta the main target at first during the last patches. And now it's a bit more balanced. I didn't actually realise that Zeke's Herald and Locket were affected by Hexec in such a way. That's kind of a good fix. Camille is very good now. They've obviously buffed her in the re up earlier, and also they've made it so her ability is a bit more usable. It makes it so that they look the targets she's ulting get locked down. That is very nice. They've obviously made the tooltips better for a couple of items. And I 
Brand's ultimate was actually bouncing more, more times than needed. That I didn't actually know about. And Rek'Sai was obviously overhealing, which I knew about. That was a bit of a a good thing to build Rek'Sai, honestly. And finally, TFT has some new music. Woo. Oh, well. If you enjoyed this patch, leave a like down below, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.